international sales and marketing head at Pro Musicals, and I welcome you guys to the Universal Audio Workshop 2022. A quick introduction about Pro Musicals, the company, and there's going to be a lot of interesting stuff here. So I won't take too much time. We're going to be a little uh, late right now, so I want to pass it on to our engineers to record a band live. But before all of that, I need to give you a history of what Universal Audio is about and what we are about. So we are from Pro Musicals, Chennai. We are importer and distributor for about 55 different brands. I'm sure you know of all of these brands. Have a look at our website, promusicals.com, and you'll see brands like Novation, Native Instruments, Focal, Focusrite, Universal Audio. All of these brands are brought to India by us, and we supply them to retail outlets who you buy from. Right? So we're happy to be here to represent Universal Audio, which is one of our premium brands. And Pro Musicals was uh, founded by Mr. Sudeen Prabhakar right here, 30 years back. We're a 30 year old company. Um, his vision for the company has brought us to where we are right now. I can boldly say he was the first one to bring in an audio interface into the country and start the entire home studio market many, many years ago, right? So he had that vision. And I'm sure each and every one of you over here have a home studio. So it all began about 20, 30 years back. So that's us, that's Pro Musicals, but give you more information on that. But today we're here to talk about Universal Audio and what this fine brand is all about. Universal Audio is a company from uh, California, Scotts Valley, and we're going to just quickly look at the history, what are their analog uh, products, their plugins, audio interfaces, microphones, what they have for guitar players, um, and their plugins for Spark. Spark is a, a natively run plugin. Let's just quickly run through all of this. This gentleman right here is Bill Fortnum, and he started Universal Audio back in 1958, and he is known as the father of modern recording. He's the one who invented the first modern recording console, the one that you see here, that one. That people, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about artists like Elvis Presley, Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Coldplay, Adele. These are the artists who have recorded on a console like this, right? So this is what happened back in the 60s, and this has soon evolved to something like this. Back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, this is today, right? This is what you guys have at home, and this is what professional studios worldwide have, right? These kind of studios, are a rarity right now. You don't see too many of these. It's more of these that you see. This is the future of recording, right? So, moving on, this is Universal Audio Steam, about 200 of them. Uh, and I must tell you, almost 90% of them are all musicians and producers. They're not just some tech guys sitting and doing some code, no. They're all musicians, active musicians, kicking musicians, right? So, these are the guys who make plugins make software that you and I can use. So they relate to you, they relate to me. This is some of their analog hardware. These are all legendary products. The LA2A, the 1176 compressor, the channel strips, 6176, LA610, all some of the best of the best. When you when you get out of CMEDU and when you go out to the industry and you walk into a studio, you're going to see products like these. And these are made by Universal Audio. Moving on, that was the hardware side of it. Now, let's come to the plugin side of it. How many of you have used plugins? Okay, so all of you have used plugins, right? So, what's different from Universal Audio plugins? What's different? Does anyone know? Has anyone used UA plugins here? Just one, two? Okay, so this is your start, probably, to start getting into Universal Audio. So, I'll tell you what Universal Audio does. They go for quality and not quantity. What do I mean by that? A competitor for a Universal Audio plugin is not another company's plugin. It's their hardware. So if, if, I, if there was a Neve 1073 preamp, a Universal Audio plugin clones the Neve 1073 preamp. It's as good as the hardware, right? So that's what Universal Audio does. They make plugins. So all of these things at the back over here, which if you go into a recording studio, you will see. E equalizers, modulation effects, compressors, all of these things, 
These are now available as a plugin in your laptop. So that's what they make, and this is your modern recording studio. Like I said, you've got your 1073, you've got your Voxbox, you've got your 737 channel strips. These are the hardware on the left, and that's the UA plugin that they make. These cost several thousands of dollars. These cost $99, $100, a fraction of the cost. If you bought all of these for your studio, you'll, send, you'll, you'll, you'll probably spend 10 lakhs. And here you'd probably spend 20,000 bucks, right? And that's what Universal Audio does. They make plugins which are as close as the hardware itself, right? And all of these plugins run in the Apollo. So I've got the audio interfaces here. Over here you can see it. And it runs inside it. It doesn't run in your computer, right? So usually a lot of people who have used plugins, you may notice that if you have 100 tracks in your project and you put 100 plugins, your system slowly begins to slow down because it's loading up. You've put so many plugins. But at Universal Audio, it doesn't work like that. The, the, the DSP for the plugins does not run on the computer. The DSP is native. It sits inside the audio interface. And that's cool because you get zero latency tracking. You can, and all of this is going to be shown to you in action right now with no latency. And you, because you cannot dream of having uh, any other plugin tracking with it with no latency. You cannot do that. You can use plugins post the recording, after your recording is done. You probably cannot use it pre, especially when you have a lot of tracks, you will have latency issues. But with this UAD, no problem at all. Right? These are some of the plugins that they make. Fairchild, AKG, Lexicon, Neve, Manly. Have a look at these are industry standard uh, names. They are, they are the biggest names in the audio business. And these are the plugins that Universal Audio makes. All of this is now Apollo. Apollo is a culmination of plugins, DSP, A to D, D to A converters, preamps, Unison plugins and all of these things in one box right here and right here, which I have, right? So what is an Apollo? It's got world-class A to D, D to A converters, which means analog to digital, digital to analog converters. So your, your quality that you hear, but just play music out of these audio interfaces sounds amazing. Uh, Real-time UAD processing, that's the plugins. Unison technology. Okay, so how many of you have an audio interface here? Most of you have an audio interface, right? OK, so I'm going to get to universe, uh, Unison technology in just a bit, and I'm going to tell you what that is. Thunderbolt. So this runs on Thunderbolt, so extremely expandable. And that, we come to universe, Unison preamp technology now. So OK, so all of you have um, an audio interface, right? It could be a 2-in, two 2-out, two 4-in, four 4-out, four whatever audio interface. Now, that audio interface has a preamp, right? You plug in a mic, and there's something called gain. Yeah, you relate with me? There's a gain. Yeah, what is gain? It's basically a preamp. It's a preamplifier built into your sound card. What does a preamp do? It amplifies the sound, right? So if I plug in this mic into an audio interface, I have to raise gain for you to hear something, right? So that preamplifier adds some character to this microphone, right? Now, when you walk into a studio, you see racks and racks and racks and racks of preamps. Why? Why can't they just do with one? Because for me, one preamp may work. But for you, that same preamp may not be the best for your voice. We may use to, you may have to use another preamp. And for a female vocalist, you may have to use another preamp. Therefore, preamps are like ice cream. They're like different flavors, right? So you use the right flavor for the right product. That's what you do. Now, in your audio interface, you have one flavor. That's all you have. You have one character. But with unison, what happens on the Apollo interfaces are, you can change the flavor of that preamp. So today you can make that preamp sound like a Neve. Tomorrow you can make it sound like an API. Day after you can make it sound like a Manly. So that changes, right? So that's, that's amazing because you now have access to some of the best names in the audio business in your laptop. And a small little audio interface right here and different, different characteristics. That's what Unison is. It's a one of a kind. No other audio interface has something like this. It's uh, very much for the Apollos. Uh, exactly right here, you can see these are some of the biggest names here, and all of these are in Unison, which means you can use all of these 
uh, character flavors in your preamp. Not just uh, preamps. How many guitarists or bass players in the house? Okay, great. So you guys, usually you take a guitar and do you go straight into a speaker like this? Does it sound good? No. You go into a Marshall amp, right? Or you go into a Fender amp, right? And that's the sound. That's your sound, right? That's where you get the overdrive or the distortion from, right? Now, what if you couldn't afford a Marshall amp? You know how much a good Marshall amp costs or a good Friedman amp costs? Several thousand dollars, right? What if you couldn't get that? Unison is, is right there for you. So just take the same guitar input, plug it into your Apollo, choose any one of these amps that you see right here, and you get that sound. Exactly, you get that sound, right? So for guitar players, for microphones, for bass players, you can use all of this. And because this entire system runs on Thunderbolt, you can expand it, which means you may just have a requirement for a two-in, two-out audio interface today. And once you pass out of college and you have a small little home setup or a semi-professional setup, you need more inputs and more outputs. You don't have to sell the two in, two out at all. You just add on. You buy another audio. That's exactly what we've done here. You may not be able to see it, but we've got a two in, four out audio interface sitting on the table right here. And then we've got an eight in, eight out audio interface sitting right there. And they're all connected. So they're talking to each other. So now suddenly I have two plus eight, 10 inputs. So it just adds on, and you can keep adding up to six devices, which means you can get a huge uh, input-output count of about 64 analog inputs, outputs. You can get up to 32 mic pre's. So it just becomes a huge, big system. Now, that 64 in and out and 32 mic pre's is more than that mixer right there. That's a 32-channel mixer. But if you stack up more Apollos, you get double the input and output of that mixer right there. So you can start with a two in, two out, and go all the way to 64 in and uh, 64 out, okay? So that's the Apollo, extremely expandable. So it could be something like this in your home. It could be a pro studio like this. It could be live. You know what a lot of people do? Um, bands which record in the studio with Universal Audio um, plugins, they shape their sound with Universal Audio plugins, right? So when they go on stage, what happens? The same band goes on stage and plays, then you're going to get all these sounds from there, not from Universal Audio. So in the studio, you've had access to some of the best sound, best names, you know, you've got your Mali, you've got all of that. But then you come out and you play a gig and you have a mixer like that and it's just the normal EQs that come with it and everything starts sounding the same. So what bands do these days, they take Universal Audio on the road. So you take it like that. So you have a mixer, and then you have Universal Audio. This is, so there's an audio interface connected maybe somewhere in the bottom, and you run a laptop with all the effects that you had in the studio. So basically, you now start to sound like the record. Whatever you made, your, your song in the studio, when you play live, you sound just like that, even live. So that's, that's the example of this. So that's the, that's the good stuff, the really, really good stuff, but it's also a little expensive. Not very expensive, a little expensive. I'm talking about 60, 70,000 upwards, right? Now, what if you didn't have 60, 70 K? That's where this comes. This is Universal Audio's latest launch. It's about six months since they launched this. Is their more affordable audio interfaces starting from 15,000 bucks to about 41 K. It kind of fills that gap, right? So this also has some killer, killer features, like the vintage preamp over there. I want to show you that probably in a better slide. It's got a vintage uh, tube emulation. Does anyone know what tube warmth tube emulation is? Have you recorded on a tube mic? Perfect. So you know what that tube warmth is like, right? So you get that sound on this audio interface. And how many of you have recorded with a compressor? Or, have, or rather used a compressor? Anyone? OK, one. Two, three, four. OK, super. So you guys used a compressor. Right? And usually you use a compressor after you do the recording. Now you can do it while you record. That's this. So that's the vintage right there, giving you a tube warmth. And that's the compressor that's built in for vocals, for guitars, or just a fast attack. Or you just don't want it, you can put it off. So you now have the option of recording clean or recording tube warmth 
and with or without a compressor at a very affordable price starting from 15,000 rupees onwards. So that's the audio interface side of things and this is what you get if you buy Volt. You get all of this. So basically, everything that you need to get going. All, as long as you have a laptop, you're good to go. You buy with a Volt, you get, a, you get Ableton, which is your DAW, you get all these plugins which have uh, SYNs, uh, modulation, reverb, delays, it's got everything. All you need is to buy it, connect it, and you're good to go. They also have microphones, which I'm not going to spend too much time on right now, but they have stereo condenser microphones. They have a podcast mic. They have a Townsend, which is a super mic. That's the same thing that's sitting right here, the Townsend. And they have some really, really high-end handmade microphones from Bach Audio as well. So I just want to quickly talk about this black microphone on stage and what it does. And of course, you'll see it in action shortly. Um, that is this. OK, so microphones are usually expensive, right? So a good microphone will run you at least 40, 50,000. A really good microphone is going to be at least 1.5 lakhs upwards, right? If you have, if you walk into a studio and you go to their mic locker and you open that locker, you probably find 20 mics inside. Now, I, I said, why do you want to have 20 mics? Because when one singer comes, you can use one mic on that singer. You can't use that same mic on everybody. If I had to record each one of you here in this room, if I use the same mic, I probably won't get the right output. Depending on vo what your voice texture is, we have to choose the right mic. And I'm sure you're doing all of this in, in class and in the studio, right? You choose different mics for different purposes. So if you had the money, go ahead and buy all 20 mics or 10 mics and keep it in your locker. But if you didn't, buy one. Because this one mic can emulate 34 other mics. And these mics are the best in the business. The best, right? And it's got a plug-in, which looks like this. And it's a stereo mic. Now, what does that mean? It's got a capsule in front. It's got a capsule at the back. And it comes out, breaks into two XLRs. Usually, one mic has one XLR, right? This one breaks into two. So which means you can blend. Even though the singer is going to be singing into one mic, over here in my, in my laptop, I get two signal, two tracks. And on each track, I can have a different microphone, and I can blend between microphones. That's basically me taking different, different mics and keeping it here and asking the singer to sing. OK, oh, OK, this doesn't work well. OK, let's change the mic. OK, go. Get another mic. Come put it. Oh, no, maybe this doesn't work. Let's try another one. So all of this back and forth, going and getting a mic, coming here, uh-uh, just a plug-in. A couple of clicks. You can just keep scrolling between different mics and seeing what sound you like, right? So that's the Townsend Lab. You're going to see that in action. Let's quickly move on. Bach Audio, really, really high end. We'll talk about this later. Pedals. For guitar players who, who like reverbs, delays, and modulation effects, they are stunning. They're really, really good. I don't want to spend too much time on this right now because of the time factor, but they're really, really crazy pedals. Give us a call, and maybe we can arrange a demo for you guys, all you guitar players out there. Aux is another, um, OK, guitar players who's played through tube amps. Any guitar players who've played through tube amps? OK, so what's, what's uh, cool about tube amps? Anyone? OK, you need to put that mic on. Just unmute that mic. What's cool about a tube amp? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the drive. Absolutely. Yeah. And when does it really start cranking? And when does it sound the best? When you, when you really push it. When you really push it. So from 0 to 10, if you put it on 10, that's when the amp starts to sing. That's when it sounds really good. But what happens if you put an amp on 10? <laughs> you probably go deaf, right? Yeah. You can't sit in that room. So you're compromising on your sound by reducing. By reducing the volume, you're not only just reducing the volume, but you're also reducing on the drive and all of that goodness, right? So what does, the, what does AUX do? AUX lets you crank your amp to 10, or if there was 11, go 11, right? And take that input and send it into this. This is called a load box. More about that later. You can control the volume of your amp through this, while the amp is still cranking at 10. 
It's super hot, you're getting the crank, you're getting the sound, but at a controlled volume through the aux. That's the aux, more on that later. Spark, this is the last thing I have to say for now before we jump into the actual um, live session. So I told you about UAD plugins, right? All the 100, 150 plugins that they have that run on the Apollo with the Apollo's DSP and all of that. Thanks to the advancement of technology and computers right now, some of UAD plugins, as in, it's not some, obviously that is going to be a much bigger number, but they've started with about 19 plugins called UAD Spark, which now run on your system. You don't need an Apollo. Before, if you wanted to run a UAD plugin, you need either a satellite or an Apollo, you need one of the Apollo interfaces to run a UAD plugin. But now, you, with whatever audio interface you have, you can run UAD plugins, 19 of them, and they're on a subscription model. You can subscribe to it for about a thousand bucks in a month, or you can just pay uh, for the year as well. So that also we will discuss later in your Q&A. Right now I wanna move it along and uh, get to the interesting part where you can experience all of this live. So we've got um, a really talented musician, Colin Francis, right here. He's a fantastic musician. I've just been hearing him, and he's just doing a great job. He's got some great tunes. You should follow this guy. Really, really cool. And to record him, we've got two ace engineers, one from Chennai, one from Mumbai. Both of them are fantastic musicians. They are educators. Uh, one's from Berkeley, and uh, they, are, they are the hottest engineers in the market right now, all of them traveling all around the world, doing their thing. And it was very hard for me to get these two here, but I'm glad that they've come. MT Aditya, put your hands around for MT Aditya and Ayan Day. Uh, MT is going to be tracking Colin. So basically, we're going to, he's going to be playing drums, bass, guitar, and finally singing. The entire recording process that you do in a studio is going to happen on this stage right now. And MT is going to be uh, tracking him. And after that, Ayan Day is going to come and mix and master that track. Are you guys excited? Yeah. yeah. Put your hands up for Colin right now. MT. Okay, hey everyone. Uh, I think Vivin has done a pretty cool introduction to uh, the whole UAD system. Um, I'm going to just get get into the picture of what it is that you're doing here, and so that you can also understand how I'm setting up the workflow for the recording, and we'll be quick and concise, and hopefully not too boring. Um, to start it off, how many of you have recorded with analog gear and equipment, or in a professional recording studio? We see some hands up. Okay. That's a few. And how many of you are recording at home on a regular basis? A lot more of you, right? Cool. Uh, what do you use to record at home? Can we get some, some devices, some names, something? Louder. Sorry? You record guitars, but what do you use? Do you use like a 2i2? Do you use, uh, are you recording in Logic, Pro Tools, Ableton? What are you guys doing? Ableton, Logic, Pro Tools, okay. And what about the interface? What interfaces do you have? Sorry? I, I heard RME, I heard 2i2, do I heard? Okay, cool, ID14, things like that, cool, super. Um, just, just to get an idea of what, what everyone does. So let's see how uh, I, I'm setting up my recording session here today. Um, I'm using Luna, which is UAD's um, inbuilt, or well, in the system DAW, which is really cool. Uh, it has amazing functionality, and the most important part about this is the way that it integrates with hardware, okay? So Vivin was just talking about your Unison preamps, um, which basically means that I can choose one of several vintage, cool audio gear, like API consoles, or Neve consoles, or SSL consoles, and I can emulate them using my UAD plugins, of course, which is fantastic. But what this is also doing is it's changing the physical property of the hardware itself. So it's changing the way the hardware interacts with the microphone or with the guitar and mimicking what that console would do originally, right? And the cool thing is I get to carry it around in my bag. Now, 
if i'm looking at it from the perspective of a recording studio yeah if you leave it to me i'd like to buy millions and millions in dollars of consoles and and uh, you know analog preamps and compressors and all of that right and record into that uh, even the other day i was uh, giving vivin some flack for buying a car and not a console but <laughs> but if i don't have the ability to do that i can't afford it i but i still want that sound this becomes really cool and what i like to do is to retain that same process the same workflow that i would have if i was working with an analog console so in an analog console i'll run a preamp i will eq it i will compress it and i will record everything right because that's the sound that we've identified on the day and that's the sound that we want to work with so um well everyone big hand for colin as he comes up on stage cool so colin we're going to start with some guitars cool um let's let's check out some ideas of what we can do with the guitar here can you all see that okay so i'm going to run a unison pre which means that we're we're setting up the same gain staging and the same capacitance and load levels of the sar pt100 guitar amp right so this is changing the physical properties of the uad device to match what that amp would sound like okay and on top of that i am just throwing in an analog api eq shaving off some of the lows and just shaving off some of the highs just to shape and get closer to a tone that he wants and then i am using a $50000 reverb which you don't get anymore called um the lexicon 220 I want to use the Lexicon 480 actually so let's do that so use a lovely vintage reverb called the Lexicon 480L and let's see what that sounds like and then we can start tweaking it so do you want to just play some your monitor is off yeah no problem I don't have your signal Can we just check that you're patched? Yeah, now you are. Now you're up. Can you open this up on the PA, please? Yeah, there you are. Okay, you can turn up a little bit more. It's Max. Okay, cool. Okay, turn up the PA. Check your tuning. You can check your tuning with the. your headphones sounding good cool so in this one uh, we were signed uh, the q control for his headphones also from right inside here what would otherwise be on an analog console were able to get full control of the entire structure from inside the daw itself which is super useful for a tracking engineer one little more level okay can't hear can you check your belt pack turn it up on the monitor. 
monitors and I can just turn it off so I don't want to hear the click. But if I do, and I can also choose how much goes to him and it's very easily and very conveniently done on Luna, which is very useful. So, um, let's check click levels and then we can get to tracking. Your click levels are good? This mic, uh, that's not being rooted there right now, but I can hit you with a, okay, so cool functionality on UAD, we have an inbuilt talkback, so I can just <coughs> hit that talkback and talk straight to him. Cool. All right, so, shall we? Okay, useful, f useful function that we have in UAD that's missing in Pro Tools for sure is, is a very easy way to copy without content. In Pro Tools, it'll ask you to pull up another dialog box and tell you copy, don't copy, what do you want to copy, etc. cetera. Luna's given you a very, very simple way to look at that. And so now we're gonna pan the guitars hard left and hard right. And 
Do a layer, cool. Okay. Before you do that, since we're doing the same thing, maybe what we can do is just variate the tone just a little bit so that we don't have a phasing sound when you have the same tone going through the left and the right. Maybe we can run a different guitar amp. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's try the other sir. All right. Okay, play some. Slightly different sounding, obviously, but very different sounding. But for the purpose of this exercise, let's go with it. All right? Cool. some vocals cool okay now again some of the some of the advantages again of tracking with this is if you realize if you actually tried to do this with your 
heavier sounding plinies and neural DSPs and whatever else while running a heavy session, it's going to be almost impossible to track with the tones in place, which is where UAD does something really cool, wherein you're able to track in real time, running all your processing, all your EQs, all your compressors, all your amp sims, and not have latency, and not have a problem actually playing, and not affecting the DSP load on your system. And the other cool thing, if you notice, if you see this guitar and guitar copy, right? The moment I activated the guitar copy track, UAD smartly disables the processing on the original guitar track that was being used to record, which means you're actually saving load on your computer and on your DSP system. So that's something that's being done automatically in UAD. And the other thing that you noticed, and if you're in a recording studio and know that this is a problem, if you don't save, you'll see people with trigger fingers hitting command S, command S, command S, command S, once every 10 seconds or 15 seconds. You notice I didn't have to do that here because Luna manages your saving of files for you, which is a really, really cool feature again brought in by UAD. Cool. So um, why don't you come center stage so that people can see you as well? It's not like I'm the tallest guy on the planet, but I think at least this way. OK. Um, I'm going to have to turn myself off, or rather, I'll keep my mic on, but him off on the PA, because with a, a mic like this, you're going to have some feedback. OK? So I'm muting the monitors. Now, let's check out what this, this really cool mic can do for you. OK? So this is the Townsend Lab Sphere, and you can see that it glows when you run phantom power to it, which is nice. Um, I am running a Manly Vox box, okay, which is one of the most sought-after vocal preamps there is. It has an EQ section, a little compression, and um, your gain section. okay. And then I am running a dynamic EQ where I am just controlling the low mids and boosting up some highs. And I dare you as an experiment to take whatever dynamic EQ you want and run it in your DAW while you record. You'll have a minimum of a second of latency, right? So being able to do that here and run a nice, powerful dynamic EQ while I track is very cool for me. OK? And that brings us to the mic control. Here is a software that's controlling that microphone. OK? Um, I can choose from one of several microphones. Right? I can choose vintage, modern, whole bunch. Right? Very, very, very nice microphones. I wanted to use today a mic that's actually not available anymore, um, which is the older Sony 800s. Yeah, believe it or not, Sony makes microphones, right? So to be actually able to use a microphone like that over here that I otherwise wouldn't get access to is very cool. I have, let's see if we can take some business away from Pro Musicals itself. They have uh, a 10 lakh microphone called the Elam 251, which I can access for one hundredth the price at this point. So it's kind of nice. So the next time they try to sell you their expensive telephone, can you tell them, no, you'd rather go for this. But um, so we'll run an, a bunch of microphones. Now, today I'm choosing to record whatever microphone emulation that we have here and print it. OK? And that's just because of the way we're set up today. But if I drag it from the record effects to the insert effects, you can choose your microphone after the recording. So you can record on whatever the, the default slate of this, the Townsend Sphere Lab. And then when you're mixing, you can go and say, no, 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 I want to choose a different mic. I want to choose a different mic. I want to choose a different mic. You can even reprint the same track in five different microphones and decide which one you want to use, right? Which is an amazing, amazing, amazing ability to have, especially when you have singers who say, I didn't like this microphone. I want different microphone. I want this will happen very often, right? So today you can tell them, now you record, we'll choose the microphone later, right? Very, very, very cool advantage to have. But today, 
me being me and wanting to have everything decided when we record, let's choose maybe the ELAM 251 and the emulation of the ELAM 251. And let's hear your vocals a little bit. Just, just sing. Uh, it's not going to be on the PA. Yeah, it's muted. Just give me levels of actual singing. Cool. OK. And here I have a lovely reverb setup from Abbey Road, which is the emulation of the EMT-140. And this EMT-140, while there are a ton of plate reverbs available even in plugins. This is one of two plugins that emulates the actual plates that are in the studio at Abbey Road. So, cool. Yeah, want to just sing again? Just, just give us levels again. Sing the song a little bit. Cool. So let's get the vocals done. Okay, now we've recorded this and we're going to take another take for sure and we hear it back. Okay, and maybe we want to say, hey, you know what? Let's get the pitching absolutely perfect as we record. And Colin's a good vocalist and I'm probably being a little unfair to him, but I can do this. And actually, I know that his song is in A and in major. And I can give him auto tune without latency as he's recording. OK? So call and sing a little bit. Let's mess with your head a little bit. Sing a minor note. Just sing a minor note for the sake of singing it. Anything. All right. OK, so let's go for it. Oh, 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 oh. 
Unfortunately, in this place, given I can hear that AC draft and and you know this other things picked up in the microphone, and I'm going to allow Ion to deal with that. <laughs> um, but yeah, a, I think that's a good take, and we want to hit some bass. Cool. We can open up the PA now. So I was telling them that you can open up the PA now. Yeah. Once you're plugged in, we can... Any questions so far, guys, while he sets up the base? Anything that you want to ask, talk about, check? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, we can. When he plays the bass, I'll play it back. Cool. Anybody else? Could you actually hear him sing at all? I could hear him nice and loud, obviously, but no? OK. Cool. OK, let's just play, it. Let's just play back. Said he like hell, oh, said he fall, said he see the enemy, and the enemy looks like me. As you can see, we are good to go with bass, huh? Yeah, just, why don't you just play a little bit, make sure we have signal. I don't have you. Just play. Play some? Okay, great. There you go. Okay, so bass is up. I want to run a nice amp, maybe the Ampeg. Okay, play some. Nice. Yeah, play. Cool. Are you are you cranked all the way up on the base? Okay, it might be a cable thing, but for now let's deal with that. And I love 
the Summit Audio TLA 100 day on bass. If anyone's heard Al Schmidt record, this is go to mic on. Okay, just nice compressor with some good saturation as well. I'm gonna hit it fast and with a slow release. So it's really getting in there and, and hitting the bass compression. Okay, and I just want to bring out a little bit on the EQ front. Okay, questions while he tunes. Anybody, anything that you have, feel free. Yeah? Every 
me cold Oh, it doesn't even matter So let's get to the the big boy boys, which is the drums. No, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. Just gonna compress it a little bit, give it some flavor. No, it's for them, don't worry, just. Okay. Okay. Cool, and some snare. I'm running the Neve 1073 on the snare, the API vision on the kick. Just imagine having this kind of luxury in a studio. One Neve console for one drum, an API console for another drum. It's kind of cool. <laughs> okay. Keep going, keep going. You want to put like a wallet on the snare or something? Just mute it a little bit. I'm going to leave that to you, but. OK, it's too much. Just a little further out. Yeah. Cool. And let's just hear. I've just done some basic EQ on the, the snare bottom, the toms. And everything else, right? Things like that. And let's get an overall picture of the drums. Just play the groove once. Just play the whole thing. Okay. I'm just going to send the drums randomly to your ears now. So let's send you some kick. Snare. Some overheads. You have your headphones on? It won't be because of how loud the kit is right next to you. It's not going to be that obvious until you crank. But we should be able to go now. How's that? Check your kick and snare. Getting something? OK. Just check if you have the track level enough.
All right, let's do one more. Sorry, you can't hear the metronome? Sure, I'll turn it up. There you go. Let's check it out. It's fine? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's do the same punch again. Everyone give it up for Colin. Okay, so that was the tracking part. You got to see some cool unison 
stuff in action. You got to see what we can do with latency and non-latency and all of that. I want to give it over to my brother here, Ayan, who is uh, going to have some fun with this now. Thanks, man. Thank you for wonderfully tracking this and going over Unison and Luna and all of those things. Um, also, big hand to Colin. Um, but before I start, uh, I want to know how, how many people here are mix engineers or want to mix or have any amount of, uh, uh, I guess, experience mixing, even if it's like your own song. Just show of hands. One, two, three. Okay, so th I'll just quickly go over what the objective of a mix is. It's, it's not like, okay, let's take something and make it completely different. You know? The idea is let's see what we have and let's try and make the best version of that. And as far as like the whole technical thing is concerned, obviously it's about not clipping and if we have like a delivery level to give it at, then there's all of those things. But more importantly, if a song feels good, it sells. If it sounds amazing, but it doesn't feel great, you know, it's not going to. And that's where, uh, like, my entire universal audio, uh, I guess, ecosystem comes into play. Because uh, just like it was with uh, Aditya, if you notice, there was like never a single pause of like sitting and thinking, ah, oh, what do I do here? Oh, okay, I want to do this. Let me try this plugin and see if it works, right? Um, so we can just very quickly listen to something, and and once we, one second, I'm just gonna adjust this. Okay, once uh, it's been decided, then we can very easily basically work. So I'm still going to continue using Luna. And I want to go over a couple of very tiny things here. So if we notice the section here where my mouse is, you'll notice there's inputs, utility, console tape, inserts, blah, 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 right? So the first half that um, Aditya was using was off the console itself. So even if I'm working on Logic, on Pro Tools, on any other DAW, this entire thing that Aditya did is standardized. We get this. However, what sets Luna apart, outside of it just being like, oh, it's another DAW and I need to learn it, outside of that, is the fact that it brings that entire ecosystem into our mix. So there's a tape section where I can load up an instance of a tape machine per channel or maybe per bus or maybe just on my auxes or something else. But it's not the same as putting a tape plugin, right? So what most tape plugins do is it kind of works on the whole idea of saturation. In this case, I can use it to essentially control the, the the, the way something sounds and feels. Because it works the way an actual tape machine works. It works on the physics of like headroom and the physics of um, different tape, um, of, of just different tape heads and different tape uh, machines. Outside of that, we also have a console section which is new to Luna where Right now, they just have the API, but I'm sure that, that they'll be coming out with Neves and SLs and every other brand that, that they're associated with. So in that case, I can have a tape and I can have a console, just, just like I would in like some of the most expensive studios in the world, except that it's off a laptop, and I can be on a train, I can be on a plane, I can be in my house, I can be in my friend's house, I can be in a movie theater, still working, which is, which I know sounds sad, but it's, it's not. Oh, <laughs> it, it just means that instead of being in an office, I'm working, not that I'm taking a vacation and I'm working there. All right, or maybe that. 
So beyond that, we have our insert section. This is the this 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 is the bit that we have in every door, right? Like we have our inserts. So we have that, and then beyond that, we have our sends. Do people know what buses and auxes are? Sorry, it's a loaded question. I guess show of hands if you do. Okay, perfect. All of you all know. Perfect. I don't need to <laughs> go over that. And then beyond that, we have our busing system. So I'm just going to play through the entire track, this time with drums, on the PA. So we, we, we heard all of this a couple of times. Uh, is there a mic in the audience? OK, um, so I want, OK, just show of hands. What would you improve about this song in terms of sonics, not in terms of like anything else? Any ideas? Like what's the first thing you would attack? Would you want the drums to be brighter? Would you want the guitars to be something else? Would you want the vocals to shine? Is there anything that anyone would go for any answers? If not, then I'll just continue talking. I'll just continue talking. Okay. So um, this would be my approach given how long we have. So we have about 20 minutes, and I need to deliver this, right? So I'm going to work in a method that's called top down which means I'm going to work on the entire stereo track, and then I'm going to go for each thing. But before I work on all those stereo tracks, what I kind of want to do is get rid of that AC hum from the vocal. So I'm going to start with that, and then I'm going to work my way from there. So if we look at the inserts for the vocals, Right, so there's there's nothing on there, and I'm going to drop in this plugin called C Suite, and what this is going to what this is going to be is. Said he like hell. Oh, get rid of the ambient song fall. and the noise. Said he seen the enemy. So I'm just going to play the intro. Can can you all hear hear that noise? Okay. And this is with the plugin uh, on. It's it may not be completely gone, but it's definitely lesser, right? Which means it's at least going to be a slightly better. Um, starting point for all of us here. And I definitely don't want to get rid of, you know, uh, the detailing on his voice at the expense of getting rid of noise. So I've kept it at about 50 and 70. But definitely one of the better plugins to own, especially if you record at home. You know, so in case someone's like making noise next to you or there's there's a bird outside or traffic noise or AC. It kind of gets rid of it. But, uh, so so I'm going to make a bus for all my drums together. Right? So to create a bus, um, it's exactly like Pro Tools, I can just create a bus from
Sorry, one sec. From there. Okay, so we have all our drums going into our drum bus. And our drums is going into, into our main LR. And basses, it's just a single bass, and then two guitars and, you know, a vocal. So at least now, I can process all my drums together. So let's do that in a... So I'm going to first throw on some tape onto the drums so that we have... So it sounds a little more um, warm and a little more analog. So if you noticed, all of these got populated immediately with the Studio 800 plugin. And I can kind of change, uh, I can change the settings on each, but I'm just looking to kind of get a flavor out of it, as Vivin mentioned earlier. I quite like it. And I'm going to add a little bit of oomph to the kick. So, uh, are people familiar with a Pultec style EQ? Yes, okay, couple of y'all, perfect. So it's, it's one of the oldest EQs in existence and, and it's still extremely famous because of how it works. So basically, these three bands are together and you can cut and boost the same frequency at the same time and it does this very weird magical thing with your, uh, with your low end in this case. These three work together so there's a bandwidth, like a Q factor, your boost, and this is your frequency selector, and these two work together. So you can just cut, and you can cut from a certain high frequency. And then we have some very normal mid-range, one, uh, one boost, one cut, and another boost. So in this case, I'm just going to use the low end. Um, booster on the kick. So I'm boosting and cutting the same amount at 60. Without. And this width. So you can kind of feel the boom of the kick which we were missing. And I kind of want to do the same thing for the snare. And uh, Aditi already used the 1073. Uh, but I still want to use a very similar EQ. And I'm going to use the 1084, which is basically like a revision for the, of the 73, to boost some highs around so that we can use that on the snare. seen the 1176 compressor, one of those analog ones, uh, which is by UA itself. And I like 
though 1176 on SNES. I like a particular 1176 on SNES, which is the um, Revision E. So what's, what's kind of interesting about this is how the ratios work. So there are these buttons, right? So you can either go 4, um, four 8, 12, 20, or I can do 4 plus 8, and I can do 12. So I can do two buttons simultaneously, or I can do all the buttons, which, is, which kind of looks like this. So I'm going to try all the buttons for this. It's going to make it sound very flat. But it's sending the, drum, uh, the snare very far behind. And I also think it's a little aggressive for call and song. As I mentioned, it's all about the song, not about what I'm doing on top. So I'm going to do a more interesting thing, which is I want 12, but I'm going to do these two together to create 12. And it does a slightly more different So we have that, but could could you all hear how the the hi hat got way louder on the snare? The moment I started compressing, it just went tss, 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 right. And this is something that always happens, whether it's a live gig or otherwise. But luckily, um, I know of certain noise gate, which I actually discovered by accident this one time because I was looking to do something completely different and this just happened. So I'm going to use this before the compressor. Now in an analog world, I would need to disconnect cables, reconnect them, and then disconnect other cables and reconnect them to make this work. Over here it's just drag and drop, which is amazing. So we have this on. Sorry. So. I'm going to mute everything else on the drum bus. Except for the snare, or rather solo snare. So we'll check it without, without the gate. And I'll pull the gate in. All I have is snare. If I make the release a little longer, and this without, and this with. Isn't that the cleanest snare you've heard from like something that has that much noise on top? I mean, it's good noise, but it's a noise. And so now with our um, compressor in, we have this really nice sounding snare. Just to go over this, we were here. We were here. And now we are here.
questions? So I'm a lazy person, so I'm just going to copy this plugin onto um, onto the sorry one sec. I'm going to copy this plugin basically just onto the um, the three tom tracks. Same settings basically, which I can do by copy pasting from the first. It should get me in the ballpark of what I'm I'm looking for, and um, that way we'll we'll kind of have a decent balance between the the overhead. <laughs> like that needed to be a little brighter so it sits and this needed to be a little um, deeper so that they kind of start complementing each other a little bit. So I'm going to use two sets of uh, plugins here again. I'm going to use the Trident um, A range which has always been my go-to EQ for most guitar guitars in general. Um, it's a fairly simple thing to use. It's, it's interesting because I can uh, engage three different filters at the same time on the low end and or on the top. But I'm just going to use this to make this one a little brighter. So it's more corrective. this, which sounds a little thin, I was thinking it would be interesting to use an entire SL channel strip uh, within the, within the, uh, the plugin itself. I mean, sorry, within the insert slots. So, So this is the SLE, and I'm just going to boost some top end. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, so very basic EQ, very basic compression overall. Now, I really want to get his vocals to sound very, very tight and in the middle. So I'm gonna use the LA-2A, uh, which again is a compressor that we saw some time back or uh, during Vivin's presentation. Sorry for that. So I'm quickly going to re-add the C-suite. If anyone has any questions in the meantime, just feel free to ask. So this was the plugin that, that I'd initially used to manage some of the noise spill. Um, and then we had an SL which does have a built-in um, dynamic section which I'm planning to not use, but just the EQ itself, just to brighten it a little bit, make it sound a little more aggressive. And finally, I want to use a LA-2A. So this is, this is a beautiful compressor. It's just going to help me rein in his vocals a little bit. I feel like the, the drums can be a little more aggressive, so I'm going to use a little bit of saturation from a thermionic culture vulture, just a little bit. This is basically a saturation unit, and let me try and take it. Sorry, I'm rushing through this since time is um, sort of catching up. Okay, and finally, we are kind of getting towards, um, I wouldn't call this mastering, but I would definitely call this something to, um, like our master section. So I'm gonna go for the precision, um, the precision limiter and the pre precision bus compressor to begin with. I've changed my mind. Uh, I feel like a Neve 
33, 6, or 9, which is, again, one of those very coveted bus compressors that I don't think I'll get to see a lot of in my lifetime in every odd studio. Is something that I can, that the song can use. Oh. basically it for my thing. Thank you. Uh, and back to Vivin. Another round of applause, guys. I am Colin, amazing, man. Thank you so much. Man, this guy plays drums, bass, guitars, and sings. Not bad at all. I know it's hard to do it in front of an audience, these things we do in the studio. But good on you. Thank you so much. Another round of applause, guys. Thanks, Aditya. Thanks, uh, Ayan. And uh, thanks, Simeru, for allowing us to come here and do this for you guys. Okay, so before we close, just two more minutes. Uh, remember I asked all of you guys to put your phones on silent. Please take that out again. Take your phones out. Yeah, take it out. Take all your phones out. <laughs> you got your phones? All right, go to Instagram. Go to Instagram. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I hope all of you have Instagram. No? You don't have Instagram? <laughs> okay, the reason I asked you to do this is because we have so much of information. This is just one brand. We have 55 brands, right? So we have so much of information to give to you guys, and the only way we can do this is by sharing it to you on social media. So I request you, type Pro Musicals on Instagram. It's one word, Pro Musicals, and follow us. This way you get to see daily updates of what we do um, what's new in the business, you guys are all in audio business, so you should know what's coming out, what's new. So follow us, and that's the only way you'll know. Um, so follow us right now, and once you've done that, um, I'm going to close the session. Maybe if you guys want to hang around, come on up. We'll have Aditya and I and also here. You want to come check out some of these things, and you want to privately ask some questions, go ahead and do that. But once again, I'd like to thank each and every one for coming. It's late, I know, but thank you so much. Give yourselves a round of applause, and thank you, Simeru. Thank you so much. Cheers. Have a good evening. Um, okay, so we also have a couple of deals uh, going on for audio people and for students and for faculty and for his institutes, and one amongst that is Austrian Audio. If you guys don't know Austrian Audio, Google it, Austrian Audio. Mics are made in Austria, and we've got a great sale going on that, and if you follow us again on social media, you will be 
uh, these, this information will be shared with you. And their mics are going at about 40 to 45% off. So we will share this information with you from Austrian Audio as well. Thank you.